Hi, I'm Eileen Roach, founder of Designs and Machine Embroidery, and welcome to today's episode of Between Friends. We have a new title, and I thought it was super appropriate. Today's episode, this program is going to be all about applique fonts, and we're going to dabble a little bit in software. I'm going to show you how to prep your fabric, how to pre-cut your fabric, and then how to actually stitch it. So hello, everyone. Hi, Misha. Nice to see you here. And Judy Warren, aloha. Arnell Burroughs from Salem, Illinois. Nice to have you here. Miss Lombard. Oh, so many of you join every week, and I'm really grateful that you do that. So thank you for doing that. We are, um, you know, really kind of growing our crowd here, which is super fun. And we have uh, lots of exciting things to share with you. Was it last week great when we had Sue Brown here and we revealed the September door? And I know that many of you um, participated in Sue Brown's at OML Embroidery in her um, broadcast last Saturday when she does the sew along. So um, it's, you know, I, I have some doors to share, share with you, your doors actually. So hi everybody. It's so great to have you here. So I'm going to switch over to PowerPoint. Fair warning, I'm working with three computers and three mice today. So we might get a little confused, okay? So just kind of bear with me. I'm gonna do my very best to keep each mouse, you know, connected to the right computer so I know what I'm doing. All right, here we are. As you know, many of you have been participating from the uh, start in January of 2020, every month I give away a free in the hoop quilt block and we call it the dime door because they are adorable. And so there you have January, February, March, and April. And then the next month was June, May, July, and August. And we had lots of people who have really been following along all year, making their doors. And our friends over at OML Embroidery have been um, doing a sew along, and that's the first Saturday of the month, and uh, following the reveal, which is the last Thursday of the month. Oh, you'll figure it out. You know. And Sandy Akira, you didn't get your door done. That's okay. Maybe next week, right? We'll look for it online for sure. Um, so let's see, we have Minerva joining us from uh, South Texas. I'll bet it's hot and humid down there today. We're in Dallas, uh, Minerva, and it's pretty humid here today too. Not, we don't normally have that, so but we're bearing with it. It's not that big of a deal. Minerva, I hope you've fared well in that hurricane. I know most of Texas was spared, but still there was an awful lot of damage. So I hope you did okay down there. Um, Okay, so let's go ahead and look at your doors. Oh, oh, thank you, Sarah J. She loves my top. Yeah, this is one of um, my neckline to hemline collections where we start with just a plain tunic or a t-shirt and refashion that neckline. And you know, um, those two, those several products that I've created here for Dime, I, I actually made with my good friend, uh, Nancy Zeman, and we're going to talk about Nancy at the end of the broadcast today because uh, there's a very special event coming up in a week to honor her. So bear with us. Okay, let's get back over to your doors. Well, Mr. September was what we showed last week, and he's an awful fun, right? A gnome down in the corner, and there was lots of different techniques that uh, we shared. So we have Bernie Steen on Stein on the left. And she did a really beautiful job. She just chose all orange fabric for her leaves. They look really lovely. And then Candy Bray, I'm pretty sure she participated in that OML sew along because I see the owl and the and the little limb hanging off the tree. I believe that was a mini from Don at OML Embroidery and all those little flowers and a squirrel in the foreground. Um, and then we have Cheryl Allen, who did a purple gnome, super fun. And I like the fabric that she used in the foreground. And she has a watering can and also an owl. And then Chris Yost, boy, she added a skunk and a raccoon. And she used variegated thread on her stepping stones. Very nice. And in addition to that, I see a lantern and a mushroom. 
uh, and a little fairy in the tree, right? If you look directly above the door, just to the left of that window, um, I see a little fairy, really fun. Crystal Campbell, she used a lot of the techniques that we taught last week. The trapunto adding a lot of uh, depth to the tree itself. And I see that she colored her lines, her quilting lines with a marker to give them more emphasis. And Kayla George, she added a really adorable heart button right to the door, so nice. And Sandy Acuri has given a shout out to Don Brown for the September micro designs. He's very generous for sure. And he always seems to hit the mark with just offering the right size and the right extra element to, um, you know, embellish these doors just a little bit more. So, and then Kayla George, you added a kind of a pronounced no, a nose on the gnome and a purple beard with some, uh, maybe a uh, cuddle fabric or something like that. Krista Lovely MacArthur, wow, you used really interesting fabric. So your door in the tree trunk really is camouflaged with the fabric that you used. It's like the trunk is going right, a tree limb is going right across it. Looks really attractive, I like that. And then Linda Wood Molden on the right-hand side, she added the owl and that little tree limb and also the lamp down in the foreground, super fun. And Lisa Grainley, same kinds of additions. Plus look, she's got a tiny, tiny miniature gnome next to the large gnome. Is there such a thing as a large gnome? But I guess so in this instance, right? One's larger than the other. And Marjorie uh, Hirschberger, she's got a, a campfire, a little campfire in, in the foreground and a moon, the owl, and also a lantern from uh, hanging from the tree limb up there. And she chose a night sky. Very nice. I like that. I think it's about the only one that I've seen. Marianne McCain Dobby. She uh, she added her uh, a little saying at the top of her tree. See where it says, "There's no place like gnome." It's very sweet. I like that. That's great. And then here on right, Mona Smith. Beautiful choice of fabrics there. Now you chose two different fabrics, and so did Mary Ann for both the door and the uh, tree trunk itself. Really very nice. Um, Let's see, Muriel Butler, she also did, and so did Nancy Eagleton. They all, many people have done different fabrics for both the door and the tree. And you know, if you remember, if you did the door, it's a second color, or it's another color. So you most certainly can um, change out fabrics there. It's super easy, you don't have to do any editing. But look at the beehive that we have over on um, Muriel but Butler's, I love that. And a field, <clears throat> excuse me, a field of clover on Nancy Eggleton's is adorable, really like that. My Irish mother would have loved that for sure. Um, Pat Di Pietro, she chose a floral fabric for her door, which really brightens it up. And her gnome has a polka dot hat, hat, super fun. And I think I see some variegated thread in her stepping stones too. Now look at the beard on Renee Paulson's um, gnome, really long fur. That was a great idea, it looks really nice. Yeah, so many choices today. Rose a Gully, another polka dot choice. And look at the row of flowers at the foreground in the, uh, at the base of the, the, the scene, looks really nice. Uh, Sandra Conley, she has a, like a watering jar here in the foreground. And then she added some, her leaves are, Kind of modeled, you know, with browns and tans, real autumn uh, leaves for sure. Okay, so now it's time to get over to our um, our applique font. So what are we going to talk about? Well, we're going to do cre we're going to talk about creating the text in embroidery tool shed, and also how you would create it in Perfect Embroidery Pro because it's a little bit different, not that different, but a little different. And then we're going to select fabrics and prep the fabrics. We'll use two different ways to prep, fusible web or, or a double-sided adhesive stabilizer, which is fuse and stick by Exquisite that we make here. And we love that. And then we're gonna pre-cut the appliques. And of course you can use a digital cutter, but I'm gonna show you two different ways to do that. And then we'll look at it in the hoop. So what fonts are we talking about? Well, of course, that's our special this week, which is um, the 10 applique fonts that come with, oh, my PowerPoint's not catching up. Maybe pull me out, Sam, and pull that back in. Uh, 
And Sandy, you're welcome about sharing the doors. Oh, and Gail, you got your supper in the oven. All right, we're on our way over. What's your address? <laughs> there we go. Here's Sandy's comment. You are welcome. It's really been my pleasure to share those doors and kind of just everybody join in this and have so much fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Misha, she's giving a shout out to all the OM OML group doors, the gang at OML. The great job, everyone. Well, you know what's really great is you all post them, which is wonderful, and that makes it easy for me to find for sure. Okay, so the fonts that we're talking about today are this week's special, and there are 10 in the collection, and they come with micro print fabric. So you'll take a good look at that in a moment. And all those fonts are $109.99, which just is just about $10 a font, a little bit more. Okay, uh, and Lynn, you like seeing what others have done with their doors. Uh, I, yeah, me too. I, I'm inspired all the time by everybody else's doors. I learn so much from them. And you're a little bit behind, that's okay. There's no judgment and there's still time to do it. Just make sure you download those doors. You don't keep them in a folder because at the end of the year, they will probably be removed from the web website. So just keep up with it. Okay, so we are going to head over to take a look at our process, all right? Okay, let's first take a look at these beautiful samples that my friend Vonnie Davison from West Texas stitched for me. Didn't she do a beautiful job? So this is our microprint fabric. This is a buffalo plaid, and we also have some polka dots. Now she chose highly contrasting thread on both her applique and her uh, base fabric, her host fabric. So we'll just take a look at these. And now she did the opposite. Red fabric with green outline, and of course that same black and white buffalo plaid. Now we have a bright yellow, I love that, so colorful. And don't ever worry about, can you use Kingstar metallic thread on applique? Absolutely, you're gonna get really good coverage all around that outline. You're not gonna have any thread breaks. We just love that. King Star, so that's really fun. In these samples, the fab the thread matches the fabric, the applique fabric itself. It does it contrasts with our host fabric, but it's blending in with the applique. So it's just another way to approach applique. You know, you can go big and bold, where here you have you know a um, highly contrasting thread with the applique and the base fabric or blend with applique. So that's your choice. Just, you know, another another thing that you have to consider when you are making these, um, th these appliques, you always have a lot of choices. You know, you're gonna have your base fabric and which applique fabric are you gonna use? And then of course the thread. And here, this is fun. You don't have to stick with the same fabric all the way across the word or phrase. You can mix it in and out with, you know, different, uh, prints, but I would suggest keeping the scale the same. Otherwise, one will overpower the other. So today we're gonna really focus on these, uh, this ball house font, and it's all caps and the word so. So I'm gonna move these samples out of the way and then show you my first step is in selecting fabric. So what I like to do is I like to take a a window template. So this is a template of the letter M that I have just cut out the interior, you know, which is really the opposite of what we normally do, right? We usually have this filled with, uh, um, you know, the design, but now this time, I, so I'm creating this window to see if this fabric is usable. And you know, it's probably not, right? It's, it's not very pleasing to the eye. That's a a highly contrasting, very big, bold print. So let's take a look at a CAFE faucet. This one works, even though it's a big print, really large print, it still works because the, it's what I call a low volume um, print. The, these colors, even though they're strong, they're all the same value, so they don't really pop. And now this might be a little, uh, you know, maybe, it, some choices here wouldn't be as best as that, which just kind of gives you that all over look. But then when you go to a microprint, you know that you're really gonna see that buffalo plaid right through there. You will also see the polka dot. Let's see, here we have that right here. And that scale is just perfect for lettering. 
And so if you purchase the collection today, you get this, you get 10 eight inch blocks of this 100% cotton microprint fabric. And you're going to have the pink, the orange, the navy, the, the green, the black, and then two more squares of orange and pink and in both the buffalo plaid and the polka dot. So that's super fun. It comes with the collection. So now that we know what we're going to stitch, what kind of fabric, now we have to treat that fabric. So you can use a fusible web. Like in this instance, I think this is ThermoWeb. That it's a protective paper on one side and a fusible product on this side. Follow the manufacturer's instructions. They always come with instructions. But basically you just, place this on the wrong side of the fabric and press it, and then this peels off. But we make a product that is uh, Fuse and Stitch. And Fuse and Stitch is a double-sided adhesive. So right now, this just feels like paper. You can see it has a little bit of a sheen on one side. You can kind of see that glue, right? So that is what I would press on the wrong side of my applique fabric. And then when I remove that protective paper, once it cools, I have a tacky surface. And I'm going to show you that. I have some pieces here to show you that I've prepared. So now the one thing about this is it is really tacky and it can be difficult to separate. Like here I have the letter S that's already been prepared. So I have score this, but I had to take a pin and really score it several times in order to separate that and pull it out. Well, let me give you a little trick. If you cut your fusing stick, right, into strips, and then when you fuse that onto the wrong side of your fabric, glue side down, that little sheen side down, and just butt those edges up next to each other, when it's fused, it fuses basically as one, but it's so easy to remove. It just peels right off. So first I'm gonna cut this out because how do we cut it out? So let me kind of, now that we have our fabric prepared, now we have to make our pre-cuts. So in the hoop, I have stitched just my cut line. That's the first color. It's also called the placement line. That's the first color of all the letters. And I'm, I'll take you back into software to show you how we get that. But first, I just stitch that out. And then I take my, take my prepared fabric squares and place them right on top of that outline. And now I'm not wasting a lot of fabric. Each of these has the fusible product on the wrong side. And then I stitch, and I do stitch it individually. I'll stitch the S, you know, place my S fabric down and stitch that. And then the machine will stop and I'll do the same for the pink and then the same for the green W. And now I haven't really wasted any fabric. And then when I take that out of the hoop, I can trim it. Now, if I hadn't applied any fusible to the back, it would be very soft and not really that comfortable, uh, not really that, firm and wouldn't really stick that well to the base fabric. I have a sample, I had a sample, hmm. anyway, um, <laughs> to show you what the difference looks, here we go. So here's two, here's one without any fabric. And I don't know if you can see this, but that fabric kind of snow plows. You see that little bubble right there? That's because it wasn't treated with any of these products prior to tacking it down. And this one is treated with the fusing stick, which is great because it just stays right in that outline and I don't have to worry about it. Now, I also wanted you to take a good look at the, the cut line, right? Is what I cut my fabric on. And then the tack down is inside that, about an eighth of an inch, do you see? So is, when you cut these out, you're not going to trim away too much. So. What I've done is I've made, I've used print and stick target paper and I printed these very same letters of the cut file on print and stick target paper. And then I place that target paper on my, on the top side 
of my fabric. Now you'll notice I have a toothpick in here. Well, that's because this stuff is really, really tacky. And if I do that, it makes it easy for me to separate it later on. So let's go ahead and just cut this out. And we'll just go, and I cut right on that thread line, right on it. And I can just kind of lift my, um, my toothpick out of harm's way for a moment. Maybe keep it over there, press that back down. And I do sometimes find that I have to um, remove some of that excess adhesive on the print and stick paper when I'm preparing appliques. It's so tacky when you first get it out of the package, which is great because when you're doing a quilt, and let's say you're going to use one design, 50 hoopings on a large quilt, well, goodness, you only need to print one sheet of that print and stick target template, template paper and uh, it will be tacky for the entire length. So once we get that all trimmed, and I just, you know, I kind of keep the scissors still, flip the fabric, turn it, and we have a little smidgen over here that we have to cut. And now on the back, here is my fuse and stick material, and see how it just fold, peels right away. Just peels right away, <laughs> like that. And now that's really tacky, see? So that is what I would stick down in the hoop when it's time to stitch the letter E. And of course, next I would wanna remove my target template paper and I can reuse this, you know, no, no reason to throw this away. I wanna keep this. So I always reserve the fabric that it came with. I mean, not the fabric, the protective pa <clears throat> paper. I'm pulling that off. And you can, so then I just store that in a folder and then I have it for the next time I'm going to stitch that. So in my hoop, it would be time to add the next letter. And interestingly enough, the way these fonts are digitized is the first color is the placement guide. Color two is the tack down. Color three is the satin of your first letter and the placement guide of the second letter. So that's one color. That's really efficient digitizing. I love that. And then I'll just make sure all of this is peeled off and I can stick that down. And then it's time to take it back to the machine, lay it and it'll stitch and just tack that whole thing down. Isn't that easy? Super easy, right? Okay, I think we need to go into software. Sarah, did, Sarah J said, Eileen, we can't see. Hmm. What, what couldn't we see? Views here are blurry. We can't see. Well, that's a bummer. Okay, Sam, what do you think? Do we need to redo that? Hmm. Let's go into, um, let's go into software so we can take a look at how you do that in software. So camera three. All right, here we are in embroidery tool shed. Right. And we're going to um, click on the text tool. How about now, everybody? Can you see? Tell me if you if you in the comments, would you just tell me if the um, if the images is clear on? Looks like the camera is self adjusting. OK, but how about PowerPoint? How's that? I'm still blurry. Okay, just let us know. Yes, it's better. Okay, so we'll carry on through this and then maybe we'll go back to the camera because we can redo that if you'd like. Okay, so once I click on that text tool, because I have embroidery tool shed loaded on my computer and I've also purchased those micro fonts, when I click on the text tool, I am presented with all of the fonts that are in included in that purchase. So by clicking on the icon, that's how I can see all the fonts that are loaded in that software. And by hovering over that icon, I then can see what characters are available within that font itself. So notice I have uh, uppercase, lowercase, and uh, digits in grammar. So grammatical punctuation. So I'm going to type in 
so SCW, and I can size by grabbing the corners and making it larger in that fashion. But I know that I want to fill a seven five by seven hoop. So I'm just going to click on the uh, property, the transform tab in the properties box. And in the width, I will type in seven. And because there's an aspect ratio, a maintain aspect ratio check mark in that box, it will also change the height at the same time. And when I click apply, it is now larger. The size of the design is illustrated at the top of the screen right here where my cursor is. You, oh, it's behind all your icon, uh, maybe all your smiley faces. But here it says width and height also tells you the number of stitches and the colors, which is seven. So in order to see the whole thing, I can click on the drop down box next to the magnification and go to fit. And now it will just fill my screen. So let's see what you're saying over here. I'm getting my mice mixed up. Still out of focus. The images are clear when you were doing the hands on the movement. It was very blurry. Okay. So I, um, I apologize for the camera work. Sometimes uh, it doesn't auto focus. So we'll, we'll go through that again. Okay. Let's stick with the software right now. And then we'll go back and, and go to uh, the camera. Okay. So. This is Embroidery Toolshed, and because Embroidery Toolshed it is a free program, you know, you, you may not have all the editing features that you would desire, but I can give you a really great workaround so we can grab just that cut file so we can pre-cut our uh, applique pieces. So I'm going to save this as a DST file, and you can give it a name. And then I'm going to close this one that I created. And this is the one that is in C2S. It's always a good idea to save this native format one anyway. Um, and then we'll just go ahead and save that. And then I'm going to open up the DST. And when, I, when that comes up on the screen, you'll now see we have all these different colors, right? Because applique is multiple colors. So the first color of the S is what we want. And I'm going to uh, click on that little arrow, which will give me the run stitch. And I'll select that. And I'm going to go Control N on the keyboard and Control V for paste. And now I want to go to the E and find just the tack down, just the cut line of the E. So again, I will do control C for copy and control paste to place it in the field. And now we'll go grab the W, same idea. And that is going to be the last color. There we go. And I will, I can do copy and paste up here, which is the icon that looks like two file folders. So I'll do copy and over into my other file and paste. And now I have my cut line. So that is how I got this. Uh, here, Sam, bring me up in here how I got this um, sew out. That's the exact same file. These are all the cut files. So I stitched that in black thread so that you could see it. If I was doing that at home, um, I, you know, just for my own personal use, I, well, frankly, if I was doing this for my own personal use, I wouldn't put any thread in at all. I would just use a needle turn off the threads, uh, the thread sensor on my machine. So it just left holes on all the outlines. So simple. And then, and then I cover each one with my microprint fabric. And um, that's how I would pre-cut it. Then when I take it out of the hoop, I just cut right on that black line, just right on that thread. And if you do that, super easy. Somebody wanted to know, um, can you do this on a digital cutter? Sure. Some digital cutters read embroidery files, so you would just send it to the machine. But if you really, uh, but in our Perfect Embroidery Pro, which is our full 
a full uh, digitizing software program, we have some other steps on how you would do it there. So we can flip over to that now, maybe, hopefully. Let's see. I'm scared. Okay. All right, Sam, let's switch over to the other computer. Oh, you do, yeah, you do have that. Awesome. Okay. Okay. So here, uh, now let's just start fresh. So I'll start with a new file. And now I'm going to use my text tool. And because I was using this font earlier, that's the last font I used. So that comes up. I'll click apply. But now I'm going to hover over, click on that icon so you can see all of the fonts that are loaded on my computer in Perfect Embroidery Pro. And every one of these fonts are completely customizable. Oh, I just love the freedom that I have in Perfect Embroidery Pro. So now this is a text file in Perfect Embroidery Pro. And so we want to break that up. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to, over here in the color sequence box, I will right click and say break up text. And now it puts each individual letter into a group and we will ungroup them. And now we have three appliques. At this point, I'm going to break up the path of each one. So here is my first color my, of the S, which is my cut line. And I will do control C and control N for a new file, control paste to put it in there, and then back to my original. Now I want to break up the next applique, which actually is um, the second one. And if I select the E in this color, th that will be the cut line of the E, and I place that in my new file. And basically, I am just doing the exact same steps that I did in um, the uh, um, <laughs> in embroidery tool shed. But it's you have a little bit more freedom. So again, I would send this to my machine. If I want to send this to my digital cutter, I just select the whole design, right click, and do convert to artwork. Now it's artwork, and then I export the artwork. I can say export it as an SVG or um, an Illustrator file, a PLT, an AutoCAD, or FCM for Brother Scan and Cut. And then I save that in that format. And all I have to do at that point is um, open it up on my on my digital cutter. Okay, and Veronica Williams wanted to know if Perfect Embroidery Pro is a full digitizing professional software that is available through our sewing machine retailers. We actually do not sell that direct to the consumers, but I know many of you have it, and many of you want it if you don't already have it. I know Sue Brown loves it. I sure love it. I use it every single day. Yeah, and Misha, you didn't know that you could convert to SVG with PEP. You most certainly can. It is the only software that I use for both art and embroidery. I even use it to draw and make illustrations for instructions, believe it or not. It's really awesome. If, yeah, like if some of the instructions that, that are in uh, the doors are often... Um, Let's see. And Jackie Burke says, if you open it up in Cricut Design Space, it needs to be resized. I don't know why you would have to do that. If you take the cut file, the first color of each of those letters, you actually do not want to resize it because that's the exact cut size you want for that embroidery file. But you know what, Jackie Burke? I'm treading into areas that I don't really know. I'm no, certainly not a professional or you know proficient on the Cricut design. So I think I'll just... I'll just stop talking right there. Okay, so let's kind of go back and show you some of these things maybe over here. One more point for Pep. Absolutely one more point for Pep. Isabel Brian, love it. Okay, so here you can, let me see if I get my hand in there if that'll refocus. That's a little better, huh? You know, it might be that tiny print it doesn't like. Okay, so 
what we're going to kind of work backwards, but I already applied the S and the third color of the first letter, right? Because color one is the cut line, color two is the placement or the tack down, and then color three is that beautiful satin edge. Also included in color three of these fonts in Embroidery Toolshed will be the placement guide for the second letter or whatever letter is following. And once that's down, because I've already prepared my applique, I just place that inside that outline. And then when I attach this back to the machine, it will stitch that beautiful satin outline and then it will stitch the W placement guide. And then I'll just take my W fabric and position that down and then I'll be done. So super easy. So let's see if we can get you to take a look at this and if this will stay focused. It's not really focusing. Can you see? Somebody give me a heads up. Oh, okay. So we have um, on the, the S with the black outline, I have added the fuse and stick to that. And you can see it's nice and flat. I don't know if you can see on the green outline, but this applique had no pre-treatment. It's just cut out just like this one. So it's kind of limpy. And when I place it down there, the, the foot, you know, wants to push it along its path and it bubbles up down one end. I hate that. That's so annoying. So that's why I always pre-treat my fabric. Always pre-treat my fabric. Um, would be good to have, let's see. Yeah, that was better. Okay. I have to say hello to Maureen Bixby. Hi, Maureen. She's from Morton, PA, which is where uh, my children were, my, my first husband and I lived and we raised our children there. And she worked at St. Kevin's when my son was there. And St. Kevin's was where he went to preschool. Maureen, he's 6'2 now. You wouldn't even know him. Okay. We're not allowed to talk about Ted here, I don't think. He'd be horrified. <laughs> but thanks for piping in, Maureen. That's really sweet. Uh, wow. Shirley, Shirley Horn, you said you couldn't even see my hands. Oh, that's so annoying. I'm sorry. Okay, well, I think we pretty much covered what we wanted to cover there. We talked about the Wonder Under versus the Fuse and Stick. What I love about that Fuse and Stick is that it's tacky. So that letter is going to stay in place um, during the embroidery process. It's not going to wiggle around, you know, in the hoop. So that's just great insurance. I love that. And of course, if you do use Wonder Under and you have one of those mini irons, you can iron it in the hoop before the satin stitch is applied. So um, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So what else do we have coming up? There's some pretty interesting things that we want to talk about. You know, normally at this time of year, I'm preparing to go to Wisconsin, not every year, but for many years in my life, September was uh, usually included a visit to Nancy Zeman, whether I would tape on sewing with Nancy or just go for a social visit or a couple times to go see the Green Bay Packers, which was super fun. So this coming week it will be the Wisconsin Quilt Expo, you know, the great Wisconsin quilt show, which Nancy Zeman started several years ago. You know, I should know that, but I don't. It's a, a, over 10, I can tell you that. And um, I've had the honor most certainly of teaching there several times. It's so much fun, just a beautiful quilt show. But because of COVID, it's virtual like most things today. And uh, in honor of her, they are doing a really spectacular um, event. And I'm going to uh, show you, and if you could just bear with me one minute because I, I lost a cord. So just one second. Well, I get this plugged in. Wow. There we go. Okay. And then we'll jump back to PowerPoint, Sam, if that's okay with you. And um, the whole Great Wisconsin Quilt Show is going to be a virtual experience. So I would encourage you to go to quiltshow.com and sign up for this free event. I mean, it, you know, everything is good. Well, I don't know about everything, but uh, lots of the program will be free. 
And on next Thursday evening at 7 p.m., they will air the documentary on Nancy Zeman's life titled Extraordinary Grace. I had the wonderful opp opportunity to be interviewed and to participate in this documentary. And last week, um, her husband, Rich, sent me the link to watch it privately. So my husband and I watched it with a box of tissues and the pause button because I needed it for sure. Um, it is so moving, I can't tell you. I mean, I knew Nancy for over 20 years and we became very good friends. We started really just as business associates. Well, actually she taught me how to sew when I lived in Pennsylvania. And you know, before I was even a mom at the age of 27, I really learned to sew by taking a first time sewers class at a local sewing machine retailer, Hayes Sewing. And then I watched Nancy every day that I possibly could. And then when my children were born, I had them trained to take a nap during, when sewing when Nancy was on. So when, I, when she first asked me, so what would uh, Kathy Bruce Purdy wants to know when, what is the website? It's just quiltshow.com, quiltshow.com, super easy. So whenever she would ask me, did you know, would I come and be on her show? And I was a guest over 17 times. Um, you know, I would just say yes before I even checked my calendar and then I would clear everything that was in the way. So we're going to uh, kind of devote some special broadcasts next week on Nancy. I hope to have a couple guests that can talk about their personal experience with Nancy. But this documentary, I really encourage you to watch. You do have to register at the Wisconsin Quilt Show, www.quiltshow.com. Just register and then register to view this uh, documentary because it's only going to be available right now through that website. Like I would love to host a watch party here on Facebook Live, but that won't be, I won't be able to do that. It's going to be a private feed through the quilt show, but you can watch it in the comfort of your home for sure. So um, I encourage you to do that. And, you know, there were quite a few people, her husband, Rich, spoke, her son spoke, and her mother spoke, uh, which was extremely moving to me to hear Barbara speak so eloquently about Nancy's childhood and her journey as a young woman and onto the successful businesswoman that she became. And, you know, we all focus on her as a businesswoman, but, you know, really, she was a great mom. She was a... Uh, Sunday school teacher for over, you know, like 30 years. She taught second and third grade. And Retha Ranke, you say her book is so good. I, I, many, all of her books are good. If you're talking about her biography, which it was written, co-written with Marjorie Russell, it was excellent for sure. For sure. Oh, what am I doing here? So let's, let's take a look also at what else they're doing at the Wisconsin Quilt Show. They are, you know, she got her start in 4-H. Um, so she, they're doing a virtual quilt show and they encourage people to make a six inch block and upload an image to the web, to the Wisconsin Quilt Show so that they can, you know, everybody can celebrate her life. So I am the last minute girl, as you know, but I've been thinking about what I would make uh, to honor Nancy because we've done so much together. Um, so, um, Gail Hardick, I, you call Nancy my sewing mom. Yeah, well, she really was a sewing mom. So I'm going to uh, make a crazy quilt block because when I taped with Nancy in 2014, she encouraged me to do crazy quilting with, with an embroidery machine. So that book really was her whole idea. And uh, I took one of the blocks out of the book and I'm going to embellish it with several of my charms from Lace Charms because Number one, her and I did two books on handbags. So there's a handbag. The dress form symbolizes how she taught me to sew clothing. And then the, the jacket should really be a t-shirt because we did so many t-shirt projects together. So um, I just thought, you know, those elements would really be perfect to celebrate Nancy's life. And the bumblebee and 
butterfly are a nod to her gardening skills because many of you know what a landscape quilter she was, right? So talented, but she was also an avid gardener. And to sit in her backyard and watch the dragonflies and the hummingbirds and the butterflies, you know, fly around was really quite a memory. So many great memories. So anyway, look for, you know, notifications from Dime. So like us on Dime, subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you'll be notified when we have some pop-up broadcast next week. Um, we can't have everybody on Thursday because it's also quilt show day. So we're hoping to get some people, you know, prior to the quilt show to just share some of their thoughts. But, um, you know, and if you're a huge fan of Nancy, you know, give us a thumbs up so that you can, um, so that we can celebrate her life for sure. And we hope to see you here next week. We're going to talk about, I know Misha, it is a fitting tribute to my dear friend. Wait till you see this documentary, what um, Grant, the uh, executive producer has done. It is phenomenal, it really is. And it really talks about her journey, her personal journey with her facial paralysis and you know just how much she struggled with that as a woman, so anyway. Uh, Melissa, she has been your Saturday morning companion on your local PBS. You miss her gentle and calming presence. Yeah. Oh, you were able to buy your first top of the line, Al Alissimo, because your husband watched with you. Sweet. That's a great memory. It's a really great memory. Yeah, she signed an awful lot of baby lock hoods, right? <laughs> the uh, the cover of your sewing machine, I know that she sure did. So, and Sandy or Curie, thank you for helping that friend who wanted to know how to post their door and so forth. So I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you just registered, Rita, for the quilt show. So do it, register for the quilt show. Oh, and Michelle, you have the same Bell's palsy. Oh, well, I hope you wear it as gracefully as Nancy did because she sure did wear it gracefully. You know, it, it, through the years, I, I really could never remember if it was the right, right side or the left side. I mean, it just was her face and, you know, didn't really mean much to me. But anyway, she uh, she's a doll. She was definitely a doll. So we'll see you here next Thursday. And then uh, I, I want to hear what your thoughts are. And um, after we watch it, you know, Maybe we'll pop back up Friday and see what everybody thinks. Have a great weekend, a lovely Labor Day weekend. Bye for now.